So if we change it to uh, if we change to close to the opposite way, so you can see what's happening. If Mr. Stevens grabs my lapel, so from here immediately you can see that as soon as he grabs this, he raises that because it's not that he doesn't want me to go anywhere. He probably wants to pull me onto his punch to amplify his punch. So this is an immediate threat. So from here, I'm going to do the same thing, and I'll do it from both sides so you can see. I'm going to trap the hand that's grabbing me with the hand that's furthest away from him, this way. As I do that, I'm going to raise this hand, just in case he decides to punch. This is split second stuff, or if I'm, I'm doing it sort of super slow so you can see, that as I raise this hand, I'm going to start to pull back. Now if he's raised this hand to hit me, and I pull this, he's not going to keep coming at me and hit. Because in this position, he feels confident and secure because he's in control. He's got hold of me so I can't go anywhere. He knows he's ready to punch. His mindset is all of a certain I'm ready to go. And anything that detracts from that, that puts him off balance or if I start to do something, it changes his control and he doesn't like it. So what he wants to do is revert. This is a split second psychological thing I'm saying. He wants to revert back to this position. So anything I do, he wants to get back to here quickly. We know nothing's clinical, but this is from my of this situation. So as I start to pull away, he's going to want to pull me back, then he's going to hit. He's not going to play, he's going to send that straight in. So my defense is I trap, because I don't want this to go anywhere. I raise this hand, just in case he does throw it, and I start to pull away. As he pulls me back in, this front hand that I raised is going to make a fist, and as I come back, I'm going to fire a back fist to the jaw. Be mindful not to do this and lean. If he moves his head, bang. So what I want to do is I want to pull and use his momentum, remember the amplifying this way, to amplify this. But once, I, once he pulls me back, at some point I'm going to stop. I'm not going to keep going, but my hand is going to go out. And then if I do, if he, if for some reason I do miss and he hits, I can come back up, I haven't gone in here. Is that clear? I want you to get that before you move on. If not, keep doing that bit. So here, raised, bang, and through. Now, for a split second, this will relax. Not all day, unless you've knocked them out, and, and in this case it will be all day. But as, as this goes through, I want you to come back on top of the hand that you've got, and I want you to turn it over. You'll have to release this hand by changing hands. But what I don't want you to do is to just come over the top like this. Because what I want is to keep his hand against me. And how I do that is as I turn, I press on his hand and it makes the back of the hands go this way. This one that comes off is going to go straight to here. And I'm going to bring my back foot up so I can put my weight on it. And I'm going to do this lock here. Juniors, I just want you to do this. I want you to try to get into this position. Don't worry about the lock, but I want the back of his hand against you, so if need be, you can apply a wrist lock by pulling him and pushing you, or just using this as a barrier so it can't go anywhere, and then applying pressure to the arm to create the lock here. I think that's all I want you to do. Seniors, as you get to this position, he's recovered, and he's gonna stand back up. As he starts to come up, I just want you to use the little finger of the hand that's on top to, to pull into his elbow and help him back up, use his momentum. As he does here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to push up with my thumb and in with this one here and create this lock here. Now if they go down, just break and let them go. Just break and let them go. Um, but if, if you want to try to see, to feel that the lock will go on, Essentially, all you're doing is turning it over and back and in. And the lock will be on there. Um, that's for cup raids, trying to get this position. Black belts, when you've got this position here, the hand that broke, that trapped for the break, is going to come underneath and lift this out of the way and finish with a palm here if it's still standing. So let's show that from the other side. Yeah. Or else we'll be doing the same time. So from here, I trap, I lift, and I pull as I come back in. 
I hit, I come back and I change here, I step up and push down. You can use your hand or your forearm, whichever works for you. As they come back up here, I'm just using my middle finger, I step up straight and I pull it in. So they're in this position, here, straight arm. If I try to press against this hand and there's nothing there, that will just go. Same the other way. So I have to have a barrier at both ends. Now if I do that and it's near the wrist, there's nothing to go on. There's no pain there. At best I could have his hand and try to get a bit of a wrist lock there, but that's too tricky. And if we're, if we're sweating because we're fighting, that'll slide off and I'd expect some kind of hit. What you need to have is when you have this position here, where their arm is straight, you're turning the wrist up and in. And this is just pushing, so this is simple. So this isn't just pushing together. As I push them in, I'm turning up and in and getting this lock. And then black belts just changing out the way. 